So this rather thick document is a load of proposals about changes to exams and assessments in 2022. So my name is Lewis Matheson, I'm a qualified teacher and I also make videos about GCSE and A-level physics. In fact, I think I have the largest collection of physics videos in the universe for these courses. So don't forget that you can subscribe to me on YouTube and I've got everything organised on my websites. Now, there's this set of proposals for the exams that are going to be coming up in 2022. Now, off call, um, the department... Uh, so this is the Department for Education in consultation alongside Ofqual, the Office for Qualifications. This is about exams in England. And they did this kind of similar proposal back last summer and also around Christmas time. And then obviously exams got cancelled. Now, let's hope that doesn't happen again. Um, but this is some of the changes that they're proposing to make things easier and fairer for students. So it is a massive document. Uh, we can see it's about about 40 pages in total. You don't need to read them all, but if you'd like to read this, then I've put a link just beneath um, the, the video down here. Now, some of it is written for teachers, some of it gets a bit boring, and I have read the whole thing, but what I thought I'd do is just kind of go through some of the key things that might affect you if you're a GCSE or an A-level student, or a parent, or a teacher, or just a, an interested person who's interested in what's happening in education at the moment. So, the first thing is that for some GCSEs, uh, they're going to be giving you a choice of topics which can be taught. And this applies to GCSE English Literature, History, uh, Ancient History and also Geography. So that's probably going to affect most people doing their GCSEs. There's also going to be a change in the delivery of practical activities if you're doing science. So this could be A-level sciences or GCSE science, as well as art and design. Something which is really important is there's going to be advanced information uh, which is given to you before the exam about what is likely to come up. And also there's going to be additional support materials if you're doing GCSE maths or you're going to be doing GCSE sciences. And again, it says in this thing that it's meant for students, including private candidates, for teachers, uh, parents, anybody involved in education. And this is still a consultation, which means that Ofqual and the Department for Education, they've put this out there. Um, I'm actually filming this video on the 13th of July. The, this was published on the 12th of July yesterday. And you've got about three weeks if you'd like to go online and put in some comments about the proposal. So you've got until the 1st of August. And again, there's a link beneath this video where you can actually find uh, the survey that you can fill in. So you can have a say about this as well. So the document, um, loads of stuff here. Um, again, you can read the whole thing. I think what it really says here, though, is that the exams should go ahead in 2022 but they will be adjusted. And this is to take into account that there's been this massive global pandemic. It's still going on. Um, who knows what's going to happen over the next few months? Hopefully things will get back to normal at some point. But really, these changes are only for 2022, and then things should be back to normal in 2023 for any exams. So yeah, that's the plan. However, obviously, Ofqual did do something similar last year, and then later on, the government announced that exams were cancelled. But at the moment, the plan is that there will be exams in 2022. Which is good, which is good. Um, it does say about the fact that there were some previous consultations. And actually, the results of those consultations have been used to inform what's going forward in terms of any adjustments which have been made. And actually, what's being proposed again in this consultation. So... Um, some subjects will have changes in terms of the topics being assessed. If you're a GCSE student, then you're probably going to be doing GCSE English language and also GCSE maths. And there's going to be no change for those subjects in terms of what's taught and how they're assessed. So that's at the bottom of page eight. There are some adaptations which have already been agreed in previous consultations. You might be aware of these at the moment. For example, if you're doing geography, then there's no need to be going out to actually do any uh, field work, as far as I understand. Um, GCSE English, English language, there's no audio recordings being submitted and a few changes to modern foreign languages. So some of these will already be happening. But what are the additional adaptations proposed? 
Basically, um, because of the amount of content being taught, um, if you're doing GCSE English Lit, History and Ancient History, um, and also I think Geography as well, then the centres have a choice, or your school has a choice about which topics they teach you. So rather than being taught everything, you only need to be taught a, a kind of a reduced amount of content. And this is just because of the huge amount of disruption. So again, that's all there. I don't want to dwell on this too much because I don't really know much about those subjects. I'm very much a scientist and uh, talking about the physics. Something that I do think is important though, is about the practical science work. Now, in GCSE, normally there are required practicals that you have to actually physically carry out. That has been taken away for the 2022 exams. So that means that rather than actually having to do all the practicals, you have to know about them. You maybe have to be familiar with the technique, so you might be doing this by watching demos, by doing some practical work, but you don't have to do every single one of those GCSE required practicals. For AS Physics, and also going on to A-level physics and the other A-level sciences, again, you don't actually have to do every single one of these required or core practicals. However, you still need to know about them because you could be asked questions about them. The reason that these are required practicals is because they introduce a lot of the other kind of topics and the theory that you need to know about. For example, it might be measuring the resistance of a wire. Now, you might not have to actually carry out the practical, but you need to know about the equipment, about the methods, and actually how to conduct that practical. And that could be assessed in the exam, but you don't actually have to do that practical yourself. If you're doing the full A level though, and I'll talk about this later on, you still need to do some practical work to show that you're competent to do the CPAC. I'll talk about that later in the video. So yeah, um, other kind of questions here, other bits that I highlighted um, are to do with this advanced information. Now I think this is probably something that's going to be really important. Okay, In terms of the advanced information, the exam boards are going to be letting you know in advance about some of the topics that could be um, assessed in your exams. Now, this is going to be about the focus of the content of the exams, um, and it's going to be issued in the spring term, which is quite late on in the academic year. The reason for that, I feel, is that if they said now, do you know what, we're gonna look at these topics, but not these ones and not these ones, then that would mean that teachers would focus all their time on the things that are definitely gonna come up in the exam, and they're gonna leave out the breadth of your science course at GCSE or at A-level. So they're gonna be issuing it fairly late on so that people have had a chance to be taught everything. And as I understand it, everything in the specification could still be assessed and it's only later in the year will the exam board say well actually we're going to be asking questions about these particular topics now when they do that i will make sure that i make some videos to cover the physics side of this in a bit more detail i mean to be honest i have videos about all of this stuff anyway on my website but i'll be doing more stuff in the spring when i know exactly what might be coming up but it's only going to give you an indication if they were too specific, then people would just learn about that tiny little part of the course. They wouldn't necessarily understand it, but they might just be like trying to um, learn answers to those particular questions. And I think on the previous page, on page 15, it does go into a bit more information about what this advanced in what the advanced information is. So it's going to say it's not going to be too detailed. It shouldn't be too specific or extensive. Um, and yeah, and this, this basically gives everybody a bit of a fairer chance to actually focus their revision rather than having to revise everything about the whole course. It's going to allow you to really target your revision to the areas that you're going to be assessed on. So that's a good thing. Um, where What's next? Yeah, support materials. This is something that in previous proposals people were really supportive of. I think 88% said this would be a good idea. Now, A-level sciences, you already get an extensive... Um, equation sheet's got pretty much all the equations you need to know. GCSE previously, you maybe had to learn 20 to 23 different equations. And what they're saying is now, is that for GCSE maths, and also GCSE physics or GCSE science, you'll be given an equation sheet. So you can take it into the exam to refer to. Now, that doesn't mean you don't need to know the equations. In actual fact, 
I've made these things um, which you can buy up here on my shop. Um, I've got these small equation sheets for GCSC and also for A level. And basically this is all of the equations that you need to know for GCSE. And I have done it for different exam boards like OCR and Edexcel. But effectively what they're saying is, is that you will be given this in the exam to refer to. Now, if you've revised well, you probably don't even need to look at it because you'll know the equations. You know that F equals MA. You know that kinetic energy is a half MV squared because if you know the physics and you understand the physics, you'll remember the equations. But it's always good to have it to refer to so you can actually check the equation as you're doing your working out. And I think that's going to make it a lot easier in 2022. But that's not only for this year. I don't think that's going to continue into 2023 and so on. The other thing the proposal says is about when your exams are actually going to be. Now, they were going to push them slightly later into June and the start of July um, because of all the kind of time lost of teaching. That's not going to be the case. And they're saying that the exams in 2022 are going to be the time that they normally are, which is often the end of May and the start of June. Um, so, yeah. They're not proposing a delay to the 2022 exams, and they're going to take place at the same time as previous years, so like 2019, 2018, and so on. However, that's still a year away, so you've got plenty of time to prepare. The other thing is that we don't know what's happening with this pandemic, um, and they've got to have some contingency plans in case the government say, do you know what, it's just not working, exams are cancelled again, which I think should not happen, but who knows at the moment. Um, so the Department for Education and Ofqual, they're working on contingency plans. And one of these plans would be that if exams are cancelled, what's going to happen to maybe teacher assessed grades? And so what they've got here are a couple of surveys. Again, these ones are closing on the 7th of August. And again, you can find the links beneath the video. Um, and they've got surveys for teachers about the tags and also from students as well. I know that pretty much every single teacher I've spoken to is kind of that close to a mental breakdown. They're on the edge at the moment, and I think if they had to do teacher assess grades again, um, they, would, they would be in uproar. So hopefully that won't happen. But anything that's um, released about this will be released in the autumn term. There's then something here about um, equality. I think they realise that, you know, some people have been affected by this a lot more than others. I know there's probably people out there who've um, had really fantastic uh, home learning experiences. They've got, you know, they've got their own laptop. You've got your own desk to, to, to study at. But that's not the same for everybody. Lots of people won't even be able to watch this video because they don't have Internet access. They don't have the data. They don't know that there's all of this help and support out there because of their family circumstances. And I think something they're very mindful of in this proposal is how they can make things as fair as possible for everybody. So there's stuff about that there. There's regulatory stuff, boring stuff that you don't really need to know about, but you can read it if you want to read the full document. Um, Annex A, I think, is important. Um, so this is where you can identify the subjects that you're currently studying and you can read more about the changes. Um, I would say here that, um, yeah, basically for GCSE, and AS level, then in terms of the, of the delivery of practical science, then you don't actually have to do the experiment. You need to know about it. Um, and it's fine if you just see a demonstration online or watch a video, which I have done for all of GCSE. So any GCSE experiments in physics, I have a video up here on my website. Um, and that shows me going through the practical, showing you how to take the results. I've got results tables and also my results analysis of all of that. So you can find all of that on my website. For those going into year 13, you don't have to do all of the core required practicals, but you do need to do some practical work to show competence that you can actually take measurements um, by doing at least the minimum amount of practical activities. Hopefully, there'll be more opportunities going into year 13 to show that. And yeah, of course here, uh, GCSE Physics and Combined Science, you will be given the equations that you need for your exams in 2022, provided this all goes through, which I'm sure it will. And then there's loads of changes here to GCSE Geography. Um, so yeah, loads and loads of good stuff here. So um, what do I think is going to happen? I think that exams will go ahead in 2022. I think they're going to go ahead sort of starting at the end of May. And I think that in between now and then, there's not going to be that many changes to most of your subjects. 
In physics, you're going to have to learn everything that's on the course specification. And it's only in the spring term will you find out a little bit more about the topics which you're likely to be assessed on in the exam. So until then, you need to learn as much of the course as possible because that's going to be important for any future study that you might be doing. What do you think? Do let me know in the comments beneath this video. If you'd like to stay updated for any other exam stuff that I talk about, if it's uh, the, you know, the confirmed changes, last minute changes, make sure that you do subscribe to me on YouTube and obviously have a look over at my physics websites where I've got everything you need for GCSE physics and also A-level physics. Um, and if you subscribe, you get access to hundreds more videos. So yeah, let's see what happens. I'll be back in a few weeks once everything's published by Ofqual. And then hopefully as a year goes on, I can help you as much as possible as things, fingers crossed, start to get back to normal. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.